A chilling prophecy echoed through the ancient hills of Rome, predicting that the future of the city would rest upon the shoulders of two twin boys. Their birth was destined to change the course of history, but the path was fraught with danger and intrigue. Rhea Silvia, a vestal virgin bound by sacred vows, faced a life of solemn duty and silence. Yet, the gods had other plans for her. The mighty god Mars, a figure of immense power and passion, descended from the heavens, driven by an irresistible force. Their encounter was a secret affair, a union that defied the rules set for Rhea Silvia and led to the birth of twins whose very existence was a challenge to fate. The news of Rhea Silvia's pregnancy spread like wildfire, reaching the ears of King Emilius, a cruel and ambitious ruler. Envious of the power that might come with these mysterious twins, he saw them as a threat to his throne. Consumed by fear, he decreed that the infants must be cast away, ensuring their demise. In the dead of night, amidst the cold whispers of the wind, Rhea Silvia's heart shattered as she saw her precious sons taken from her arms. In an act of ruthless cruelty, Amulius ordered the twins to be thrown into the Tiber River, hoping the river's current would swallow them whole. Their tiny cries pierced the silence of the night as they were set adrift on the water, their fate uncertain. But destiny had not finished with them yet. As the river carried them away, the twins' cries softened to a hopeful murmur. The gods seemed to intervene, guiding the fragile basket toward the riverbanks. There, a miraculous discovery awaited them. A she-wolf, fierce and protective, found the basket among the reeds. Instead of attacking, her maternal instincts took over, and she nurtured the infants with her own milk, ensuring their survival. The story of their rescue soon became legend. Rhea Silvia's heartache was transformed into a tale of divine intervention and miraculous survival. The twins, Romulus and Remus, were not merely saved from death, they were chosen by the gods to fulfill a prophecy that would shape the future of Rome. Their journey from the river to their new life among humans would set the stage for a city's founding and a destiny that would echo through the ages. The fate of two tiny lives hung by a thread as the cold waters of the Tiber River threatened to claim them. Yet, a miracle unfolded. A she-wolf, drawn by their cries, discovered the basket nestled among the reeds. With gentle nudges and soft licks, she took the infants under her care. The river's icy grip had failed to take them, and the warmth of the she-wolf's love saved them from certain death. The she-wolf's cave became their sanctuary. Her instincts guided her, providing the nourishment and protection the twins desperately needed. They grew strong under her watchful eye, their cries and coos mixing with the growls and rustles of the wild. One day, as the sun bathed the riverbanks in a golden glow, the shepherd Faustulus and his wife, Aca Laurentia, happened upon the she-wolf's lair. They had been searching for lost sheep when they heard the faint cries of the babies. Their hearts melted at the sight of the helpless infants. With great care, they took Romulus and Remus from the she-wolf, who, with a knowing glance, seemed to entrust them to their care. Faustulus and Acolorentia were childless, and the discovery of the twins felt like a divine blessing. They raised the boys as their own, providing a loving home in their modest cottage. The twins grew up surrounded by the gentle rhythm of pastoral life, their days filled with laughter, play, and the warmth of a family who adored them. Even as children, Romulus and Remus showed signs of extraordinary qualities. They were fearless and bold, qualities that soon became evident as they played with the other village children. Their natural leadership shone through in their games, where they led their friends with an unspoken authority, always taking charge and guiding their playmates with confidence and fairness. The twins' sense of justice and their instinctive bravery set them apart. One day, while playing near the river, they encountered a band of outlaws who threatened the local shepherds. Without hesitation, Romulus and Remus stood their ground, protecting the shepherds with a courage beyond their years. Their actions won them admiration and respect from the villagers, who began to see them not just as orphan children, but as future leaders destined for greatness. Faustulus and Acolorentia watched with pride as the twins grew. They instilled in them the values of loyalty, honor, and compassion. The boys' deeds were celebrated in the village, and whispers of their potential spread far beyond the riverbanks. 
They were more than just the sons of a she-wolf. They were the living embodiment of a prophecy that spoke of greatness and the founding of a city. As Romulus and Remus approached adulthood, their leadership skills continued to flourish. They worked alongside their adoptive parents, helping to tend the flocks and care for the land. Their strength and wisdom became apparent to all who knew them. It was clear that their future held something extraordinary, something that would forever change the course of history. Their upbringing, though humble, was marked by an undeniable sense of purpose and destiny. The love and care of Faustulus and Acca Laurentia gave them a foundation upon which to build their future. Their early experiences shaped their characters and prepared them for the monumental task that lay ahead. The moment Romulus and Remus set foot in their birthplace of Rome, the air was thick with the scent of destiny. The city that had once been their cradle now lay under the oppressive rule of King Emilius, the man who had driven their mother into exile and abandoned them to the river's mercy. With fierce determination burning in their hearts, the twins made their way through the familiar streets, now tainted by the shadow of tyranny. The people, recognizing the strength and nobility in the young men, whispered in awe. Romulus and Remus had not come to visit, they had returned to claim their birthright. Their arrival did not go unnoticed by Emilius. The king, a figure of cruelty and arrogance, saw the twins as a threat to his power. He dismissed their presence with contempt, failing to realize the true weight of their arrival. As the twins approached the palace, their steps were filled with purpose, their resolve unshakable. The confrontation was inevitable. Romulus and Remus, backed by the support of the people and their own formidable strength, faced Emilius in his grand hall. The tension was palpable as the twins revealed their true identities. The recognition was instant. The king's face paled as the truth sank in. These were the very children he had tried to drown, the sons of Rhea Silvia, the true heirs to the throne. The battle that followed was fierce and swift. Romulus and Remus fought with a blend of raw strength and strategic prowess, their moves echoing the legends of old. Amulius's guards, though loyal, were no match for the fierce determination of the twins. As the clash of weapons rang through the palace, the people of Rome gathered, their hopes and fears intertwined. In a dramatic showdown, Amulius was overthrown. His reign of terror was brought to a decisive end, and the city's chains of oppression were shattered. The fall of Amulius was not just a victory for the twins, it was a restoration of justice and honor. The people cheered as Romulus and Remus, triumphant and resolute, reclaimed their rightful place. With Amulius defeated, the time had come to restore order. The twins turned their focus to their grandfather, Numitor, who had been unjustly deposed and exiled. The old king, once a figure of wisdom and respect, was brought back to the throne. His return was met with tears of joy and relief. The city that had suffered under Amelius's rule now looked to Numitor as a beacon of hope and renewal. The impact of the twins' actions rippled through Rome. The overthrow of Amelius marked a new beginning for the city. Romulus and Remus had not only reclaimed their heritage, but had also restored a sense of justice and stability. The political landscape shifted as the rightful ruler was reinstated, and the people of Rome embraced a future filled with promise. The twins' return and the restoration of Numitor symbolized more than just a change in leadership. It was a powerful statement of justice and the triumph of the human spirit. Their bravery and commitment to their heritage had altered the course of Rome's history, setting the stage for the city's rise and the legacy that would follow. The city of Rome was on the brink of existence, but the moment of its birth was clouded by a bitter disagreement. Romulus and Remus, the twins whose destinies were intertwined with the city's future, found themselves at odds over where to build their new home. The dispute began when the twins stood on the hills overlooking the valley where they dreamed of establishing Rome. Each twin had a vision of the perfect location. Romulus favored the Palatine Hill, believing its height and strategic position made it ideal for defense and grandeur. Remus, however, was drawn to the Aventine Hill, where he felt the land was more fertile and suited for growth. Their disagreement was not just about geography, it was a clash of dreams and principles. Romulus saw the Palatine Hill as a symbol of strength and leadership. He envisioned a city that would stand proud and tall, a beacon of power and influence. 
Remus, on the other hand, was motivated by the promise of prosperity and abundance, believing that the Aventine Hill offered a future of bountiful harvests and thriving communities. As the debate grew more intense, omens and signs were sought to guide their decision. The twins consulted the gods, hoping for a sign that would make the choice clear. The augurs, priests who interpreted the will of the gods through the flight of birds, observed the skies and the movements of the birds. Romulus saw an omen when a flock of twelve vultures circled above the Palatine Hill, which he took as a divine approval of his choice. Remus, not to be deterred, saw his own sign when six vultures appeared over the Aventine Hill. Each side claimed the gods were on their side, leading to a standoff of faith and stubbornness. The atmosphere grew tense as the brothers' once strong bond began to fray under the pressure of their conflicting visions. The dispute reached a dramatic climax as the arguments turned into a fierce competition. The twins agreed that the gods would choose, but they would each make their case through a physical contest. They set a boundary line, and whoever could gather more support and show greater resolve would decide the city's location. As the day of reckoning approached, the tension in the air was palpable. Romulus and Remus gathered their followers, each rallying support for their chosen hill. The people of Rome were torn, caught between the passion of the twins and the significance of their decision. The city's fate hung in the balance, with every choice carrying profound implications for its future. In the end, Romulus's fervent supporters and the impressive signs that seemed to back his choice swayed the final decision. Romulus's vision of the Palatine Hill as the city's foundation was chosen. The city's walls began to rise, marking the birth of Rome on the hill that Romulus had championed. The weight of the decision was immense, and as the first stones were laid, the air was heavy with both triumph and sorrow. The tension between Romulus and Remus, once a symbol of their shared dream, now became a painful rift. The conflict over the city's foundation left scars that would last. The dramatic turn of events had not only defined the city's location, but had also set the stage for a future where their bond would be tested further, and the echoes of their disagreement would resonate through the annals of history. The air was charged with anticipation as Romulus stood at the heart of the newly chosen site, ready to fulfill a destiny written in the stars. The foundations of Rome were about to be laid, and every ritual, every gesture, held the weight of history. The city's birth was marked by ancient ceremonies meant to honor the gods and ensure their favor. Romulus began by drawing a sacred furrow around the hill, marking the city's boundaries with a plow. This simple act was more than just a physical task, it was a sacred rite that defined the city's limits and sanctified its ground. As he turned the soil, the rhythm of his movements spoke of a new beginning, each furrow a promise of what was to come. The people gathered to witness this monumental moment, their faces a mix of hope and reverence. Romulus, with his strong, resolute presence, led the rituals with solemn grace. Prayers were offered to the gods, seeking their blessing for the new city. The sacrifice of animals, an ancient offering, was made to appease the divine and ensure that Rome would prosper and endure. Romulus's role was not just symbolic. He took charge of shaping the early city and its institutions, laying the groundwork for what would become a powerful and enduring empire. His vision for Rome was clear, a city of strength and unity. He established the first walls and gates, creating a space that was both a haven and a fortress. The city began to take shape, each stone laid with purpose, each building a testament to Romulus's leadership and ambition. The first settlers, drawn by the promise of a new beginning, began to populate the city. They built homes and markets, laying the foundation for a thriving community. Romulus's leadership extended beyond the physical city. He established laws and customs that would guide the people and shape their lives. The early institutions of Rome, from its senate to its assemblies, were created under his guidance, setting the stage for the city's future governance. As the city grew, so did its identity. The founding of Rome was not just an event, it was the birth of a legend. The city became a symbol of resilience and power, its very existence a testament to the vision of its founder. Romulus, through his actions and decisions, wove the city's identity into the fabric of Roman mythology. 
The rituals performed, the institutions created, and the city's layout all carried a deeper significance, linking Rome's origins to the divine and to the enduring spirit of its people. The founding of Rome marked the beginning of a legacy that would shape the course of history. It was a moment filled with emotion and significance, a testament to the dreams and struggles of its founders. The city that arose from the soil, shaped by Romulus's vision and guided by ancient rites, would become a beacon of civilization and power, its story etched into the heart of its people and the annals of history. The dawn of Rome was more than the rise of a city, it was the birth of a new order. As the first sun rays kissed the newly built walls, Romulus set to work crafting the very foundations that would uphold the city's future. The air was thick with the promise of greatness, and every decision carried the weight of an emerging empire. Romulus understood that to build a lasting city, he needed more than stone and mortar. He needed laws and structures that would guide the people and ensure justice. With unwavering resolve, he began drafting Rome's first laws. These laws were not merely rules, they were the bedrock of Roman society, designed to create fairness and order in a city brimming with hope and potential. Each decree was a step toward stability, each law a promise of protection for every citizen. The city buzzed with the energy of anticipation as these laws began to take shape, offering a glimpse of the future Rome would become. Alongside the creation of laws, Romulus organized Rome's early government and military with meticulous care. The fledgling city needed a way to defend itself and govern its people. Romulus established a structured military force to safeguard Rome's borders and maintain order within. The early Roman soldiers, fiercely loyal and well-trained, became the guardians of the city's safety and future. Their discipline and bravery were a testament to Romulus's vision of strength and unity. The formation of the Senate was one of Romulus's most enduring contributions. Understanding the need for counsel and governance, he founded this assembly of elders and leaders who would help shape the city's decisions. The Senate became the heart of Roman politics, a place where ideas were debated and policies were crafted. Romulus, as its first leader, set a precedent for leadership and collaboration, guiding the Senate with wisdom and fairness. The assembly's decisions would echo through Rome's history, reflecting the strength and foresight of its founder. In these early days, Romulus's leadership was both visionary and practical. He knew that Rome's success depended not just on its physical strength, but on its ability to govern and protect its people. The laws he crafted, the military he organized, and the senate he established were all part of a grand design to create a city that would endure through the ages. His efforts were not just about laying bricks or drafting laws, they were about creating a legacy, a living testament to the promise of Rome. As the institutions took shape, they transformed Rome from a collection of hopes and dreams into a structured, thriving city. The early Roman government and military became the framework for a civilization that would grow to influence the world. Romulus's decisions and actions in these formative years set the stage for a future filled with glory and conquest, and his legacy lived on in every law, every soldier, and every member of the Senate. The foundation he laid was a beacon of what Rome could become, a city born from the courage and wisdom of its first ruler. In the heart of Rome, a sense of urgency filled the air. The young city, brimming with promise and ambition, faced a critical problem. It needed women to grow and thrive. The early Romans, though eager to build their new society, found their population too small to sustain their dreams. The lack of women was more than a social issue. It was a barrier to the city's future. Romulus, driven by a fierce determination to secure Rome's survival, decided on a daring and controversial plan. In a bold move that would become legendary, he orchestrated the abduction of the Sabine women, hoping to address the city's dire need for new families and to integrate the Sabine people into Roman society. The festival of Neptunalia was chosen as the backdrop for this dramatic act. Romulus, under the guise of celebrating a festival in honor of Neptune, invited neighboring Sabine families to join the festivities. As the Sabines arrived, they were greeted with warmth and feasting. Yet, amid the merrymaking, the Romans were preparing for a shocking turn of events. At the height of the celebration, Romulus gave a signal, and Roman men sprang into action. In a flash, the Sabine women were seized and carried away, 
their screams echoing through the streets of Rome. The scene was chaotic and heart-wrenching. The women, who had come in goodwill, were suddenly torn from their families and taken to a place where they were to become part of a new society. The Sabines, shocked and enraged by this betrayal, responded with swift and fierce retaliation. Led by their king, Titus Tatius, they gathered their warriors and marched toward Rome, intent on rescuing their captured kin and punishing the Romans for their audacious act. The ensuing conflict was fierce, with battles fought on the city's outskirts and within its walls. Rome, despite its newfound strength, faced a desperate struggle against a united Sabine force. The clashes were brutal, and the air was thick with tension and sorrow. The cries of the wounded and the clashing of swords painted a grim picture of war. Yet, amidst the chaos, something extraordinary began to unfold. The captured Sabine women, now living in Rome, began to see the city not as an enemy but as a new home. Their initial anger and fear gave way to a complex mix of emotions as they built lives with their Roman captors. The turning point came when the Sabine women, now integrated into Roman households, took a brave and unprecedented step. They intervened in the conflict, pleading with their Sabine fathers and brothers to stop the fighting. Their voices, filled with the pain of separation and the hope for peace, moved both sides. The women, now part of Rome, became symbols of a new unity. Their heartfelt pleas were met with a dramatic resolution. Romulus and Titus Tatius reached an agreement, and the two peoples began to merge. The Sabines were incorporated into Roman society, and their integration was marked by both celebration and sorrow. The conflict ended, but its impact was profound. Rome gained not just a larger population, but a deeper connection with its neighbors. The city grew stronger and more diverse, with the Sabine people becoming integral to its future. The abduction of the Sabine women, while initially a brutal and heart-wrenching act, led to a new chapter in Rome's history. It was a story of struggle and conflict, but also of unexpected unity and the forging of a shared future. The women, once victims of a daring scheme, became the bridge between two worlds, their bravery and sacrifice a testament to the city's enduring spirit and resilience. In the early days of Rome, tension crackled like a storm on the horizon. The city's foundation was both a triumph and a burden, and nowhere was this more evident than in the tragic story of Romulus and Remus. Their bond, once as unbreakable as the walls of their new city, was about to be shattered in the most heart-wrenching way. The dispute between the twins had always simmered beneath the surface, fueled by differing visions for their burgeoning city. As Romulus and Remus stood on the Palatine Hill, the city's fate hung in the balance. The air was thick with the promise of greatness, yet also with the threat of conflict. Their argument over where to build their new city had long since escalated into a bitter feud, a tension that neither brother could quell. One fateful day, their disagreement reached a boiling point. The brothers were surveying the city from their respective vantage points, each convinced of their own vision for Rome. The clash of their dreams and ambitions was more than a mere disagreement, it was a collision of their very identities. The air was heavy with anticipation as Romulus, resolute and unyielding, prepared to take drastic action. In a moment of heated confrontation, a tragic and irreversible decision was made. Remus, in defiance and frustration, leaped over the walls that Romulus had meticulously built, mocking the efforts of his brother. The sight of Remus scaling the city walls was a direct challenge to Romulus's authority and vision for Rome. In a burst of anger and pain, Romulus struck down his brother, the clash of their wills culminating in a moment of devastating violence. As Remus fell, the city stood in stunned silence. The world seemed to pause, the weight of the moment pressing heavily on everyone present. The death of Remus was not just the end of a life, it was the end of a shared dream, a heartbreaking split of a vision that had once been united. Romulus's heart was a battlefield of grief and triumph, his victory now tainted by the blood of his brother. Romulus's reaction was a mix of sorrow and resolve. The loss of Remus left him isolated and haunted, burdened by the sacrifice that had sealed his rule. The pain of killing his own brother was etched into his every decision, the ghost of their past overshadowing his every step. The city's founding was forever marked by this act of fratricide, a somber reminder of the cost of power and ambition. 
the symbolic and political implications of Remus's death were profound. Romulus's ascension as the sole ruler of Rome was both a triumph and a tragedy. The city's future, now firmly in Romulus's hands, was forever linked to the bloodshed that had paved the way. The death of Remus became a potent symbol of the sacrifices made for Rome's greatness, a somber reminder of the personal costs that accompanied the birth of an empire. In the annals of Rome's history, the death of Remus was a tale of ambition and sorrow, a story that would echo through the ages. The city that rose from their shared dream now bore the weight of their fractured bond. Romulus's rule was marked by the memory of his brother's death, a poignant reminder of the personal sacrifices that shaped the destiny of Rome. As the sun rose over the fledgling city, Rome began to emerge from its tumultuous beginnings into a beacon of power and promise. Romulus, the city's founder, stood as its first king, his reign a blend of visionary leadership and relentless ambition. The streets, once echoing with the cries of conflict, now buzzed with the energy of growth and expansion, thanks to Romulus's tireless efforts. Romulus's reign was marked by remarkable achievements that shaped the very fabric of Rome. Under his leadership, the city expanded beyond its modest beginnings, its influence stretching across the surrounding lands. Romulus's military prowess and strategic brilliance turned Rome into a formidable force. His ability to unite and inspire his people turned Rome from a fledgling settlement into a growing power. The expansion of Rome under Romulus was not just about territory, it was about the creation of a legacy that would endure through the ages. He organized the city into a structured society, setting the groundwork for its future governance and military strength. His leadership laid the foundation for Rome's remarkable growth and the establishment of its early institutions. As Romulus's reign came to an end, the transition to a new era began. The succession of kings following Romulus was a pivotal chapter in Rome's history. Each king who followed Romulus inherited not just the throne, but also the weight of his legacy. The foundations he laid, the systems he established, and the spirit of his rule influenced every aspect of Roman governance and culture. The early Roman kings, each with their own vision and leadership style, built upon Romulus's legacy. They continued the expansion of the city and refined its institutions, guided by the principles and structures Romulus had set in place. The legacy of Romulus was not just in the physical growth of Rome, but in the principles of leadership and governance that shaped its future. Romulus's lineage, too, played a crucial role in the continuation of his legacy. The importance of his descendants was not merely in their royal blood, but in the continuation of his vision for Rome. His descendants carried forward the traditions and values established during his reign, ensuring that his influence remained a guiding force in Rome's history. The significance of Romulus's legacy was evident in every aspect of Roman life. The city he founded became a symbol of strength and resilience, its growth and success a testament to the foundations he had laid. His contributions to Rome's early expansion, his role in establishing its institutions, and the impact of his lineage were all woven into the very fabric of Roman identity. Romulus's reign was a blend of triumph and sacrifice, his legacy a complex tapestry of vision, leadership, and enduring influence. As Rome grew from its humble beginnings into a powerful empire, the echoes of Romulus's reign resonated through its history, a poignant reminder of the man who had forged the city from the ashes of conflict and uncertainty. The story of Romulus and Remus is more than just a myth, it is a cornerstone of Roman identity that reverberates through the ages. From the very beginning, the tale was woven into the fabric of Roman culture, becoming a symbol of the city's strength and origins. The myth of the twins echoed through Roman art and literature, a vivid reflection of their profound impact on the culture. Statues, mosaics, and paintings brought the dramatic scenes of their story to life. The image of the she-wolf nurturing the infants was not just a symbol of survival, but of the city's resilience and nurturing spirit. Artists captured the moment with striking emotion, their works a powerful reminder of Rome's legendary beginnings. The dramatic scenes of Romulus and Remus, from their perilous abandonment to their heroic return, were immortalized in these artworks, shaping how Romans viewed their own origins. In literature, the twin story was told and retold, each retelling adding layers to their legend. 
Poets and playwrights drew upon the drama of their lives to create works that celebrated Rome's values of bravery, perseverance, and destiny. These stories were not just historical accounts, but were crafted to inspire and unite, serving as a constant reminder of the city's divine favor and noble beginnings. Romulus and Remus were more than legendary figures, they were integral to Roman identity and propaganda. Their story was used to legitimize the power and authority of Rome's rulers, connecting them to a divine and heroic past. The tale of the twins provided a powerful narrative for emperors and leaders to align themselves with the greatness and destiny of Rome. By invoking Romulus and Remus, leaders connected their rule with the city's origins, reinforcing their own legitimacy and the city's grandeur. The legacy of Romulus and Remus extended far beyond their own time. Their story became a touchstone for later historical and cultural contexts, a symbol of Rome's enduring spirit. Through centuries of change, their myth continued to be a source of inspiration and reflection. The twins' legend was adapted and reinterpreted, yet always retained its core message of strength and resilience. In moments of crisis and triumph, the story of Romulus and Remus served as a reminder of what Rome had overcome and what it could achieve. Their legacy was a powerful narrative thread that connected the ancient past with the present, infusing Roman culture with a sense of continuity and pride. The myth of Romulus and Remus was not merely a story of the past, it was a living, breathing part of Roman culture that shaped the identity of the city and its people. Their tale, rich with emotion and grandeur, continued to inspire and captivate, a testament to the enduring power of myth and legend.